Why do we need to know how life evolved from non-living matter? Evolution is the process of change in the heritable traits of a population over successive generations, driven by natural selection and genetic drift. It discusses how life evolved from non-living matter and what it means for our understanding of evolution. It also discusses what evolutionary theory has to say about different levels of complexity and how it can be used in medicine. When the first living things appeared on Earth, they were very different from all the other molecules that make up our world. Nowadays, Scientists know of over 3.8 billion species of organisms and even more bacteria, with a grand total of 7.5 trillion individual cells in existence. But how exactly did life evolve from non-living matter? The answer to this question is a bit complicated and relies heavily on the many theories of evolution. In order to discuss how life emerged from non-living matter, it's necessary to go back in time. The two main types of evolution are natural selection and random mutation. One natural selection explains how life began and is the process by which living things change from non-living to living over time in response to the environment. Animals adapt to their environments through natural selection while also altering their environments in response to environmental conditions. Adaptive radiation is a process by which a group of related or unrelated populations evolve rapidly into many different ecological niches. When dealing with the term adaptation, biologists often use the following definitions. Adaptation can be defined as a change in phenotype that is due to genetic change or environmental factors, or both. A phenotype is an observable trait like size, color, shape, physiology, behavior and so on. On a molecular level organisms undergo changes in their DNA that result in changes in the expression of their genes. These changes may be permanent or temporary depending on the environmental conditions. Two random mutation helps explain how new species of organisms arise, including those with which we are familiar on Earth. The transition from non-living matter to life relies heavily on each step in the two types of evolution. Random mutation is a type of genetic variation that introduces new traits that allow an organism to adapt to its environment. What are some physical theories for life coming about from non-living matter? One theory is that the first life forms formed from non-living matter in a planet's hydrosphere, which is an aquatic environment with water and minerals. The first organisms would have started as small droplets of water floating in this environment. Eventually, enough organic molecules would have been created to allow for the formation of cells and eventually, an organism. Another theory is that life may have been created from non-living matter in a planet's atmosphere through chemical reactions and oxidation. The first organisms would be composed mostly of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and water vapor with some minerals like iron oxide or silicate. A third theory is that life may have been created through a space meteorite crashing on the planet Earth. This type of event could create conditions capable of fostering the growth of life and eventually becoming fossil fuels and rock weathering due to the presence of water. This theory is still up for debate because when scientists analyzed sedimentary rocks in the Columbia River Basin, they found no evidence of a meteorite impact. Some research suggests that, life may have originated in hydrothermal vents that developed close to the impact site and then spread around to other areas of Earth. The formation of hydrothermal fields is sometimes thought to be a result of meteorite impacts. Meteorites crashing into the earth could provide energy for reactions that produce water and minerals, which could create hydrothermal fields. If this is the case, it would mean that earth was created in one specific location, but would then spread outwards. In contrast to the idea that earth was formed from a single impact, the dissolution model of planet formation suggests that earth was created from smaller impacts. What are some scenarios where life may have been brought forth from such primitive non-living matter? This is a question that has been asked since the beginning of time. The idea of life being brought forth from non-living matter has been a fascinating one to ponder over. There are various scenarios where life could be brought forth from non-living matter, such as through the process of evolution, or by artificial intelligence. The most popular scenario is that life was created by some form of intelligent design or creation. This idea is an important one as, without it, the universe would be viewed as chaotic and even meaningless. If life was not created by an intelligent being, then God would have had to create everything by himself which is not only a significant task but also reasonably impossible. In this vein of thinking, 
There are many who believe that the story of the creation of life reveals aspects of God's personality and nature. There are also many who find this story problematic or incoherent in its present form. For some, the most glaring issue is that the Bible does not provide a clear picture of when God created life as it seems to contradict itself. For example, in the beginning of Genesis 1 1 2, it says that God created the heavens and the earth, and then in verse 3, it says that plants were brought forth. Some other creationists have suggested that this is a typographical error. Then the earth was brought forth as God created it, and the heavens are not yet with you. At what point did life begin? Scientists and theologians don't agree on this question, so there is no definitive answer. Fascinating Facts About the Life from Evolution Process The life from evolution process is a fascinating process with lots of surprises. Many of these surprising facts about the life form are mentioned below. When you can learn a lot about galaxies from the life from evolution process. The life from evolution process is a complex and diverse process that has been happening for billions of years. It is a process that has led to the existence of galaxies, stars, planets, and other organisms. 2. The evolution of human has been influenced by the marsupial mouse and Trinidadian guppy. The marsupial mouse and Trinidadian guppy are two species of animals that have evolved to survive in their respective environments. The marsupial mouse is a rodent native to Australia, which is known for its distinctive pouch on its stomach that it uses to carry its young. The Trinidadian guppy is an invasive fish from Trinidad and Tobago, which has adapted to life in the Caribbean Sea. 3. There is a huge amount of biodiversity in Earth's oceans, but still more than 90% of them remain unexplored. In order to explore the oceans and ensure that they are not destroyed, marine biologists need to be able to find and identify species in the ocean. 4. Earth has been around for 4.5 billion years and it is estimated to have a lifespan of 100 plus billion years. It is estimated that humans will have a lifespan of 100 plus billion years, which means that humans will evolve and explore new things on this planet. It is estimated that human beings will die at the end of this century. 5. The universe is estimated to be about 13.8 billion years old and the age of Earth is around 4 billion years old. The universe has an estimated number of about 100 sextillion stars and the number of planets in the solar system are estimated at 10 to 20 sextillion. For every second that goes by, the number of stars in the sky increases by 1. 6. The solar system has been around for 4,567,000,000 years and the galaxy has been around for 14,800,000,000 years. The solar system is a celestial body that consists of the Sun, its orbiting planets, and the objects that orbit them. The solar system is located in the Milky Way galaxy. 7. The evolution of human has been influenced by the marsupials and placental mammals, which evolved around 100 million years ago. The two main types of mammals were the marsupials and placentals. Marsupials are born in a pouch, while placentals have an external womb. Marsupials evolved to become placental mammals around 100 million years ago. The first placental mammal was the mouse-like Olmaya, because they needed to find a way to save energy on their pregnancies and give birth to more babies at once. 8. The human genome has been analyzed and mapped, but there is no data on the evolution of genes in humans. The human genome is a perfect example of how technology has changed the way we view and understand our world. The Human Genome Project was completed in 2003 and allowed for an unprecedented amount of information to be gathered about our DNA. 9. The solar system has been around for 4,567,000,000 years and the galaxy has been around for 13,700,000,000 years. The Earth is about 4.5 billion years old and it is estimated that the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. The Sun is one of the largest stars in our solar system and it's not even close to being the largest star in our galaxy. 10 humans have been evolving for 99,000 years. This is a long time, but it is not enough time to understand the intricacies of human biology. Humans have evolved so quickly that we are still in the process of understanding our own biology. 11. There are 400 million humans alive on Earth today. The United Nations Population Division forecasts that the population will reach 8.6 billion in 2050 and 9.8 billion in 2100. The world population is increasing by 1% every year and this has been a concern to many people because it is difficult for the world to provide enough resources for everyone. 
Stay tuned for part 2 of how did life evolve from non-living matter in physics and don't forget to subscribe to my channel please, thank you.